All right, so we want to build an RC model airplane, and we want to build it to have a certain flying weight. Let's take a concrete example and say that we want our model to be just under 250 grams. So the question is, how big should we build our model so that its flying weight is around 250 grams? I will share in this video a simple method to scale the size of your airplane model so that you can achieve your target flying weight. First, you need to establish what type of plane you want to build. You might be thinking of building an exact replica, for example, building a scale warbird, or you may just want to build a plane that looks and flies a certain way. For example, you set your eyes on a high wing plane that resembles and flies like a Piper Cub. We know that the size of a model airplane is most commonly defined by its wingspan. So let's use wingspan here to define our model size. What we need to do next is to figure out the relationship between wingspan and flying weight. We can do this empirically by looking at data from existing models. This method is quite simple and uses interpolation or potentially even extrapolation. I will use a couple of examples and spreadsheets to demonstrate the sizing method. If you're not familiar with spreadsheets, don't worry. It is possible to also apply the methods using manual graphing. Okay, so here is our spreadsheet and an example of the Piper Cub. First, we will need to find and enter data for existing Piper Cub models. We need data for at least three plane models. Ideally, we will include data for models that are both greater and smaller than your target weight. If that is not the case, the methods will still work, but we'll need to use extrapolation instead of interpolation. We have data here for a Micro Piper Cub, model that is 145 grams, or 0.145 kilograms. One that is 450 grams, or 0.45 kilograms, as well as a park flyer that is 1.05 kilograms, and a quarter scale model that is 6.8 kilograms. We could exclude the last model as it is quite a bit heavier than our target weight, but it really doesn't matter and it's not gonna make a difference either way. The next piece of information that we need is the size, represented by the wingspan in this column. This will allow us to determine the relationship between wingspan and flying weight. In this column, I have provided the corresponding wingspan for each model in meters. I got the data online, as you can see here with the URLs. Next, we apply a line of best fit or trend line to our data points. I'm representing a power function because I know that there is a cubic relationship between linear dimensions, such as wingspan, and the weight, which is in fact related to volume. So now that we have the graph, we can use it to determine a wingspan that corresponds to our desired flying weight of 250 grams or 0.25 kilograms. Hence, a wingspan of 0.8 meters or 80 centimeters should result in a Piper Cub that has a flying weight of around 250 grams. For those who are more advanced spreadsheet users and mathematically inclined, we can also generate and use the equations for the relationship between weight and wingspan. Instead of reading off the graph, we can simply use the equation to get the same result. Here's a second example involving a Spitfire. Again, it's exactly the same process, just different data that relates to this type of model. And here again, you can see how we can extract the information about the wingspan from this graph. So that's just about it. Some final notes. This method is helpful in providing an estimation of the size, but the eventual weight of your model will depend on many factors, including the components and materials that you use. The method assumes that you will apply standard materials and components as found in other existing models. Please let me know in case you found this video helpful. I can also provide more in-depth information about how to manage your weight during building in case there is interest. Please leave your comments. Thank you.